Hello everyone, my name is Wesley Moeller and this is going to be an introduction uh, to underground construction. Now again, feel free to take any notes and send me uh, any direct questions to my email that's listed in front of you. Uh, and again, the other videos for this series will be uploaded to YouTube for public use. Now before we get into underground, we're going to have to go over some of the common equipment that's used uh, in an underground crew. The first of this type of equipment would be excavators. Excavators are essential to any underground crew. They're made for removing material, particularly in trenches. Um, they're also used for moving stockpiles uh, for mass hauling operations. But for this particular video, we're gonna stick with the underground components. Um, they come in different sizes, all the way down from a 320 to a 374, um, and even a 390, which I'll show you later. Next we have compactors. Uh, compactors are very important because in, in underground specifications you'll have a section that calls out for compaction to be either 90% or 95% relative compaction um, in the trench for the backfill and this is basically to prevent a, a collapse of the trench line um, underneath an existing structure. So to do that, to get this compaction, um, you don't only need water but you also need uh, either a compaction wheel or a Rex. Now the compaction wheel you attach to the end of an excavator um, or sometimes a backhoe and you run it up and down the trench and that's how you gain your compaction. Um, that's convenient because you can run it with an excavator and have it swap buckets uh, and also compaction wheels at the same time. Uh, the Rex on the other hand uh, is very popular in construction crews as well because it's essentially a tricycle compactor. Um, it can straddle the trench line and compact with its center front wheel um, while having its two back wheels on the other side, on either side of the trench. Um, this is compared to maybe a CAT 815 or 825 that has that lost uh, compaction surface area in between its wheels. Next we have wheel loaders. Wheel loaders uh, are made for moving large amounts of material around the job site somewhat quickly. Um, the buckets on the front can be swapped out for forks to move uh, underground components like sticks of pipe, uh, valves, concrete components, uh, etc. Next we have backhoes. Backhoes are kind of a jack-of-all-trade for underground crews, um, but they're particularly most commonly used as support equipment um, unless you're doing some really small work. Backhoes are convenient because on the front you have the capabilities of a small loader where you can um, move material into trucks or around the job site which can also be swapped out for forks but then in the back you have outriggers with the bucket that you can excavate trenches you can lower components into smaller trenches as well so that's why it's a very popular tool uh, support tool for underground crews uh, we talked about the equipment but now we're going to get into the crew composition behind this equipment um, the crew are the guys that make it happen so first we got operators. This is typically half or a third uh, of the underground crew that you may see on a given job site. These are the guys running the equipment, um, typically OE2s or operator uh, class twos through the union here in California. Um, the second would be laborers. Laborers are the guys in the trenches. Usually that's like 50% of your underground crew is composed of laborers. These are the guys that are installing valves, uh, checking grade, gluing sticks of pipe together, um, pour concrete, set in concrete, all the above. They are the guys getting it done. And then finally you have a foreman, one for each crew, and they're coordinating uh, with radios with both their operators and their laborers and getting the tasks that they need to get done. Now another piece of equipment that's essential to an underground crew that we didn't talk about yet are trenchers. Now you can see here in front of you this is a Vermeer trencher, in particular a Vermeer rock trencher. Um, we needed this because at this particular job site we were uh, trenching through a series of rock knobs that were inside the earth um, so we could lay a, a water, a potable water line up to a water tank on top of a hill. Um, but you can see it's got that elevator belt on the rear and it can switch the direction so it can remove its spoils either to the left or the right side um, depending on what you want which is very convenient uh, when you're working in tight spaces. The next type of trencher would be a wheel trencher. Now these uh, don't do so well with rocks um, 
because they're made for more uh, clayish, sandish, or uh, silty material that comes out easier, and hence they have teeth on them still, but they also have buckets that remove the material a lot easier. In, in this instance, um, we have a dry utility contractor using a wheel trencher um, for looks like electrical or potentially gas conduit that they're laying further down the line. Your third option for excavating a trench would be using the excavators we discussed earlier. As you can see in front of you, um, when you're dealing with rocky material like this excavator is, you might have to switch back and forth between the rock pick. Um, and it's actually a very quick and easy uh, thing. The operator can do it without even getting out of his cab. Um, the only problem is this is a very slow method for uh, trenching through rock. And if it's too solid of rock, it's too fresh, it's, it's not going to work. Now this next few series of clips here, we're talking about lay-in reinforced concrete pipe, which is just a different type of pipe typically used for storm or, stewer, or, storm or sewer. Um, this is 84 inch RCP, which is very large pipe. <laughs> we needed to have one of the largest excavators in our fleet, this 390 you can see, uh, well over the pipe into the trench. And then um, as you can see, the next series here is, uh, you can see the grade setter, uh, checking the bedding where the pipe's going to sit to make sure it's level uh, and to the grade so they can get the desired flow they need. And then you have a laborer verifying that and correcting it with a shovel. Next, we have uh, a water line being installed. This is some C900 uh, water line by one of our laborers. Uh, this is a very deep water line, so it was necessary for us to uh, utilize a subcontract with a trench shoring company. Um, and that's those blue components you can see there. Essentially, it protects your guys in the trench and your structure from being collapsed in on by the uh, surrounding dirt. This is the law. It's OSHA requires you to do this. The only way to get out of it is to um, shore your slopes. But in this instance, it was too steep or too deep of an excavation to shore uh, to the desired, um, to the needed depth. Next, we have just kind of a last picture for you. This is probably one of the most common areas you'll see an underground crew working. Um, they're, they just finished pouring a base for a manhole. You typically see those in the streets covered by a metal grate, but uh, this is what it looks like at the very bottom of one. You got a pipe coming in on either side of those. This particular set is a storm drain, and they're about to pour the uh, drain inlet itself um, just to the right side of the picture. But you have a few laborers finishing the concrete joints and then you have a foreman uh, overseeing the work and some of the grades of these components. Now that's all I got for this video guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like, comment, or subscribe um, or email questions directly to the email you saw in the beginning of this video. Thank you for your time.